we're just uh, with indulgence, we're just waiting just like two more minutes for another councillor to show up if possible. So just hold on. We'll start about uh, five oh or seven oh four. All right, good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, it is, um, I'm uh, Mayor Kevin Murdoch. Uh, we are, hold, this is a special committee of the whole tonight where we are reviewing the Carnarvon Park plan. Uh, this is the first chance that we've had uh, to have both the uh, Parks and Rec uh, uh, and Culture Commission meeting uh, together with Council to all have a look at this plan. So uh, we also have the uh, Lees and Associates here to to give it forward. I'll start this meeting with uh, just by acknowledging that we are on the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish people, uh, specifically the Lekwungen speaking, speaking people, known today as the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations, that their connections to this land continue to this day. I also want to just point out that these, uh, this meeting, uh, like all our public meetings, is live streamed uh, and archived for future purposes. So if we'll invite people to come forward to speak uh, to, to the committee at a uh, point later in the meeting. Um, but it, uh, so when you do that, you'll be recorded. That's it. And I'm, uh, I have a very short part of, of my job today, which is really to, to uh, hand off to Mr. Herman um, to give an overview of what, uh, of the process that's been undergone and then the report itself, uh, you can hand off to the consultants, I guess. So thank you and welcome Mr. Herman. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, as, uh, as you're aware, um, the District of Oak Bay's official community plan included a recommendation to prepare a master plan for Carnarvon Park. Uh, approximately a year ago, uh, we undertook a, a RFP process to uh, find a consultant to help us with that project. And uh, in July of 2018, Lees and Associates was uh, hired to undertake the work. And since that time, uh, Lees and Associates has uh, led us through uh, Certainly what staff feel is a very thorough public consultation process to date uh, that's included meetings with uh, staff, steering committee, council, uh, commission, uh, stakeholder groups, uh, park neighbours, um, middle school students, um, included some uh, two open houses and, and two surveys. So the feedback that came from all of that consultation is uh, included in the draft report and and Eric Lees from Lees and Associates is here today to, to provide a presentation to pr present the uh, draft report for uh, council and commission. And uh, in addition to the report that you see there, there are some additional options that uh, council has at your disposal. Uh, there are four options uh, as to what um, council may wish to do after hearing the presentation and any comments and questions. Uh, the first one is that council uh, receive the, the master plan for information. If that's the, the option chosen, there'd be no further action taken. Uh, secondly, that council direct staff to refer the Carnarvon Park master plan to a future regular meeting of council for adoption. That would be the appropriate uh, option to choose if, if you're happy with uh, the plan as is. Uh, the third option would be that council refer the draft Carnarvon Park Master Plan to staff and Lees and Associates for amendment as required for future council consideration. Uh, we would require some detail as to what those amendments uh, would be in order to go forward. Uh, and the fourth option is, uh, is some other option that uh, council may decide. So just wanted to make you aware of, uh, of those options. And that's enough for me, I think. Uh, just like to introduce Eric Lees from Lees and Associates and uh, um, worked with Eric in the past in, in some other municipalities and, and have always uh, found their quality of their work to be very good. And we were happy that they 
bid and were successful in uh, in our RFP process. And uh, I'll turn it over to Eric to take it from here. Welcome. Mr. Mayor, Your Worship, members of council, staff, and uh, assembled folks from the neighborhood and the community and those viewing from home, I'm delighted to be presenting the master plan tonight. Um, uh, as the, the Danes say, how long can we keep you? Um, so I, I figure I'll, I'll keep my presentation under uh, an hour, an hour and a half, if, if that's okay. Um, no, seriously, I'll try to get through this quickly. And this is the agenda that you have uh, in front of you. Um, and um, we'll proceed uh, through uh, an overview of what the, the project was about um, and uh, take some time on the public engagement uh, summary um, and then delve into the, the concept itself and, and recommendations, implementation, and of course, uh, more than happy to take questions. Uh, as Ray said, uh, we uh, are specialists in, in parks and recreation master planning. I was 20 years on Ray's side of the table before I started this practice in uh, 1998. Sometimes I wonder why I left public service, but uh, pretty pretty pleased with the, the, the last 21 years of, of work in, in, uh, in small and large communities around Western Canada. Um, so obviously enough uh, working in parks and recreation, that's my happy place and, and has been for, for my entire career. Uh, this is the, uh, the group that you can see here. Uh, we are all landscape architects and planners, um, far more women than men, I might add. And, and actually the work you see in front of you was largely completed by uh, three very, very strong women on our team. Unfortunately, they, they can't be here. Um, so I'm, I'm tasked with this part of the of the uh, of the project so the uh, brief overview your worship um, a long-range vision for Carnarvon Park and I emphasize the long range and Ray emphasized that right from the get-go uh, this is not a commitment to spend so we hope that what you'll see tonight will guide staff and council in future decisions and building of budget um, and um, for some of the long ongoing operations, but it's a long range vision. We undertook an extensive inventory and site analysis, which I won't go into in, to a great deal uh, of detail. Uh, ditto with best practices and trends. Um, that's all in the report and we hope uh, you'll find, um, community will find you utility and, and useful reading there. The, the, the body, what I'll talk about tonight is the concept plan, recommendations arising, and, and, a, and a brief bit around uh, implementation and phasing. And as I said, uh, uh, there's uh, um, a, quite an extensive appendix in the report that details the community engagement, which I'll be summarizing tonight. So the vision itself, uh, as uh, drafted by ourselves with staff and then presented on a number of occasions to the community is a Carnarvon Park is envisioned as a community gathering space for all ages that offers accessible, inclusive and flexible recreation opportunities for all. The engagement, your worship, was extensive and the uh, level of involvement and enthusiasm from the community was in my experience unsurpassed uh, for a for a neighborhood park of, of of this size this kind of programming and this level of uh, of amenity uh, you, you've you don't need me to tell you uh, how engaged your community is. Um, and uh, we're delighted to be part of it. Um, there was the first open house, 300 participants. An online survey, 704 responses. A really a fun youth engagement with 47 participants. The second open house, another 150 participants in the community questionnaire uh, that wrapped it up, 288 responses. Um, public information boards were up at the rec center um, and, uh, and online throughout the uh, feedback period. Uh, we had uh, wonderful input from steering committee made up of staff and council and members of the PRCC, um, a neighbor's workshop uh, and stakeholder meetings with uh, uh, four different stakeholder groups in the, in the community. So, uh, I would characterize this kind of, uh, this level of engagement as, uh, as, as extensive um, and rigorous. These are just a few of the uh, comments we, of the hundreds we received. 
Um, I'll let you scan through them, but they had a whole um, whole whole range of, of interests from athletics to informal activity to the idea for uh, more trees and indigenous planting in the uh, in the park, um, more di more divi biodiversity. Um, um, so it was. It's the appendix is actually you oftentimes don't get there in a report, but it's really interesting reading the, what what came what came from your community here. Um, and I picked up on this typo. We we didn't balance divers, but we had a balancing of diverse <laughs> uses and activities um, that uh, that arose through that. So there was uh, support for a wide spectrum of recreation opportunities. Uh, for a good mix of organized and free space. So this is something we see a lot in our work, the, the difference between formal and informal recreation activity, uh, support for both dedicated pickleball and basketball courts, support for maintaining the existing sports fields, more green space planting, flexible space, support for informal flexible recreation for youth and children, and all wheels court and basketball court and strong consensus that tennis should definitely be a part of the of the updated park. Uh, as you're, I, I'm sure aware, the, the field house there is is basically not usable anymore. It's long past its prime um, and needs to be replaced. And there's a uh, a strong uh, desire for that to happen. Uh, we asked the community, would you prefer single or a double story? And the um, the majority of those expressed an opinion preferred a two-story building option. There's just more flexibility associated with that. There's more that can be accomplished within the same footprint. Although 30% had no preference and 26% preferred a single-story building. So a lot more work needs to be done before. I'm um, just going to interrupt you for just a second because yes. for anybody who's at home following us along, there's a few of these slides that aren't in our package. So these key findings are not, unless you go to the report, uh, it's in the report, it's, but it's not in the, in the PowerPoint that's attached to our package. So I see a few of us, including myself, scrolling through, <laughs> trying to find these pages. They're not there. So if, uh, if you're looking at home, uh, just look to the report itself for these. these Thank slides. you, Mr. Mayor. I Thank thought you. that it would be useful to add some more detail around the engagement rather than just saying what it was, you know, what the findings were. So that's I really appreciate that. Almost 70% of those who responded strongly support a proposed splash pad area. Um, it's much larger than it was. Uh, uh, strong support for adventure play. Uh, strong support for an all-wheel zone. Strong support, well, 42% for pickleball courts and 34% strongly support or, or, or support the proposed tennis court. So 53% uh, strongly support or support the Carnarvon Park plan. So when we did uh, take the plan uh, to the community, uh, there was strong support for it. This will not likely be legible for, uh, for those of you either at home or, or even in the crowd because the printing is so small. Not to worry, I'm going to be delving into each one of these zones in detail so you'll get the, the full picture. But the RFP was clear. The area of focus and emphasis was on the northwest corner, the northwest quadrant, hence the more, more detail and the graphics shown on the plan. Although um, there, there came through the engagement process a desire for a walking path and some park-wide facilities such as a walking path around the perimeter um, and um, generally speaking a, a desire for greening up the park some more so there's, there's more trees planted um, and we did include a pathway north to south in behind the concession stand uh, that, uh, that breaks up the... Um, um, that breaks up the, the, the two ball fields and provides um, uh, better access, uh, better for maintainability, as well as some seating along the perimeter as well. So um, in this way, the park can be used, as I said before, in a more informal rather than a structured play uh, um, purpose and, and for, for those type, type of activities. Uh, but most of the work we've done and most of the work that the, the neighborhood was interested in was in this uh, north northwest corner. Um, parking has increased. We've uh, 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 brought the parking up to 73 vehicles. Uh, uh, bike racks at park entries are included. 
Uh, racket sports uh, heavily dominate the hard surfaces in the in the park now. Uh, one neighborhood tennis court is proposed for pickleball courts, uh, and a practice wall is much needed. The one that's there is uh, long past its prime; it's falling apart. Um, the uh, expanded water play is uh, is is much larger, better than double than it was. Um, an all wheel zone, which kind of exists now on the old lacrosse box and on the tennis courts, but it's not really well surfaced or in, in good shape. So this formalizes that. Um, some some uh, proper basketball hoops and the introduction of well, there is a little bit of adventure play now, but but having a proper adventure play zone is proposed so uh, your worship what I'll do now is I'll zone in on uh, on three or four of these uh, main areas um, uh, this is in the very northwest corner the uh, the parking there is now going to be if the plan is implemented of course uh, uh, parking uh, stalls 32 parking stalls within the boundary of the park uh, and in and out arrangements so that uh, families can safely park um, and it uh, uh, also forms a, a good boundary to the all wheel zone immediately to the east um, and the uh, basketball courts are all part of that kind of uh, gray blue gray color um, the the one tennis court is uh, part and parcel of the same arrangement um, and the backboard would be uh, we we're suggesting it be in in this area here so there's sufficient zone uh, for a player to step back and, and hit against the wall um, and then the four pickleball courts are are in this zone we're suggesting, and it's pretty evident in the body of the report, that there be a long central access way, Your Worship, that that uh, more or less uh, parallels the, the current access um, that goes right by the lacrosse box and and up to the um, up to the um, the current building location, and and not far from the proposed building location. So we end up with a, a nice uh, paved area here and an adventure play. We're talking six to twelve year olds, so this is not a, you know a high end uh, uh, ropes course or anything like that. This is uh, uh, for for families. The whole park is is really uh, designed, uh, uh, especially with these improvements for families. The parking, as I said, expands to 72, 73 stalls. There still will be parking along Henderson, but the, the, the parking zone, it's a, it, it pushes out into the street a little bit. We're suggesting that there also be some traffic calming there so that um, families getting in other cars and, and for that matter, um, people going through uh, the neighborhood along Henderson can do so uh, safely. Um, and uh, so that, uh, that will be a big addition to the neighborhood in general. So this zones in on the central part of the park, Your Worship. Field House is more or less the same location. Footprint is a little bit bigger. Um, an ample zone for families to mingle um, in and around the Field House um, as they're getting ready to play uh, on uh, pickleball or tennis courts uh, or to go into the splash pad water play. So this is, this is the, the forecourt. This is the sort of the living room of the park, if you will. Um, and uh, uh, it, it's, it, there's lots of different things that can happen there from festivals to uh, craft gatherings or Santa Claus or any one of a number of different things that could occur there. Um, we spent a fair bit of time uh, looking at the, uh, the perimeter up against the, uh, the lawn bowling, uh, which is on the far eastern edge of the existing splash pad. And, and uh, a lot of people said, look, we, you know, we don't terribly mind lawn bowling being there, but we'd sure like to see it. You know, we like to we like to actually be able to watch it. So, uh, obviously, we need a fence there so that we don't have uh, 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 conflict of uses. But um, a permeable fence is what we're suggesting um, in that in that location. And then the field house itself, and these are, we did uh, have uh, um, Glenn Stokes from Carskadden Stokes, McDonald Architects, specialists in field houses and bathrooms. Um, believe it or not, there are architects that specialize in public bathrooms. Uh, on our team, we've done a lot of work with them, and um, they're the ones that have been guiding us as to the utility of the existing building, which 
not much left of it, uh, and and what might go into um, a future building and how that might be structured. And so, um, uh, although these uh, elevations look like the buildings designed, it's not. Um, and you'll hear me talk a bit in, in implementation in, in a sec about the proposed field house. Uh, um, so the community, you know, what what did folks have to say that when they saw the plan? Uh, Enthusiasm, as I said before, overwhelming support for it. Um, love to see this in my neighborhood. Um, the most important consideration is play space and organized sport. Um, there was some wondering if all the space dedicated to lawn bowling is necessary. Uh, we left that one alone for now. Um, uh, future future consultants, future councils can can tackle that. At this point, it's one of the stronger clubs, um, and in my experience, and I've uh, I've helped with winding some of these down over the years. This is not the time to do that in 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 this community with that club. They they're active all year round. Uh, they've got two good greens and. Um, it gives the community some breathing room in another 10, 15, 20 years, maybe a generation when lawn bowling, maybe it, it, uh, it tails off. You've got a fair bit of real estate there, but for now, uh, our recommendation, uh, your worship, is that it, uh, that it remains. Um, so in, in terms of phasing, as I said off the top, this is not a commitment to spend. This is a path forward. This shows a vision, a vision, may not be a perfect vision, but it shows a vision. Um, and the next, uh, the next steps would be to take that vision to some detailed levels to engage the community further. That goes without saying whenever you make a significant move in, in a park like this. Um, so that would uh, uh, be necessary along with detailed construction drawings. Um, the, the building came up over and again as something that needed to be addressed. And so uh, we're suggesting that uh, budgets be willing, which is a huge caveat because it's a big budget, that the building uh, and main plaza be the first uh, big move, then the splash park um, and adventure play, and then building up to new courts. Um, uh, but this is a this is a long term <coughs> vision. If you could wave a magic wand, your worship, and come up with the monies necessary, this would still be a three year project. Um, and in all likelihood, um, because I know you don't have big budgets, uh, is probably uh, much closer to even a, a five or a six year project. We're saying 2025, um, but in all likelihood, it's going to take longer than that. Uh, a lot depends on the engagement, especially with the field house, which is the single most expensive component um, uh, that could potentially bring in partners. So if you get some key partners, if you could take advantage of some of the infrastructure funding and, and other partnership funding that's, that's either available or, or expected to be available, then you may be, able, may be able to advance the plan that much faster. Uh, but um, this, is a, this is a vision that um, uh, I'm proud to say I think enjoys wide community support. Um, the engagement process was, was thorough and rigorous and um, there's ample, ample evidence to, to show that. So uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, I'm more than happy to uh, take some questions. Thank you very much. That was a good thorough overview uh, and obviously lots more detail in the report itself. I thought process-wise, just to simplify things, we'll do essentially questions first. So I'll go around to members of the, uh, I think, Parks, Rec, and Culture Commission first, uh, ask questions, then we'll come to this table, ask some questions. Um, and if there's anything outstanding, we can come back to that. But I think that's that's appropriate. We can just, because a lot of us uh, here tonight, if we just to be pointed in the questions, just get straight to them and, and give the applicant a chance to answer if there's, if there's areas of clarity. Um, following that, I might uh, also invite the public up to ask some questions. Uh, and then after that, we'll come back to these tables, have some discussion, and then open again to the public if they want to have some more comments uh, and pieces on that. So we'll try and get to the clarification cycle first and then come back and do some, some discussion around next steps and uh, what people like or don't like in that part process. So uh, I will turn to the Parks, Rec and Culture Commission members. Is there anybody who wishes to, uh, to speak first? Ask questions, any questions of the, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, here, Mr. Hoffman, yeah. Director Hoffman. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm wearing my uh, um, public art advisory hat right now, committee hat. I'm on that committee too. Um, I, I'm scanning the um, 
of the report, I saw some smallish references to public art in, in your plans. Um, I wonder if you could speak to that um, about you know the importance, the, the thinking you had, the, the vision you have about the place of public art in the um, in the in the Carnarvon Park. I know that we have a very um, good um, committee right now. We've been working for three, four, or five years now. So we have a very strong process of um, appealing to artists, vetting it, curating it, um, putting it out there, as you see around Oak Bay. So um, we'd really enjoy, I know that, um, getting involved with uh, getting some art in the park, both what I would call artistic art, you know, like, like a sculpture somewhere, an aesthetic sculpture, all the way from that to bike racks, murals on walls that are kind of part functional as well. So so I'm making a bit of a plea for, from us, you know, to, to think about art. Um, this is to council too, I think, uh, as we proceed. And I hope that will be, you know, a substantial part of it. And, but certainly I think enhance the park a lot to have some, you know, really good public art. So comments, please. I'd be delighted, Mr. Mayor, Your Worship. Uh, we're on the same page, uh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, if you uh, are able to read through the report in a bit more detail with a bit more time, you, you should be able to see a number of references and certainly many opportunities for, for public art. One of them is right at the main entry uh, coming in. We call this an entry feature. We see that primarily being uh, a public art feature of some kind. We see a mural of some kind uh, as part of the backboard. Uh, system. Um, there's some wonderful technology out there now where uh, with chain link fence uh, you can create these sort of animated uh, activities um, without going into the, the technology of it. That's just one example. One of the challenges we have in a park that is so uh, I'll say encumbered because it kind of feels that way if you're trying to make it green is all the chain link fence. In order to have a backstop, you need chain link fence. In order to have a tennis court, or a, <laughs> you need chain link fence. That can, that can oftentimes feel very penitentiary-like, but done in an artistic way changes it entirely. Uh, there's some great stuff being done with used tennis balls in chain link that uh, just changes the whole complexity of the, uh, the complexion, I should say, of the, of the court and the park. So um, ample, ample opportunities, and uh, I would suggest that in the next design phase that that be a, a key theme. All right, thank you. Uh, Director Moore, you had a question or questions? Uh, more so just a few comments. Uh, difficult job putting this all together, by the way, and I think you've done a great job doing it. Uh, as a person who has, you know, grew up in, in Oak Bay and been playing at that park for 30 years for various different reasons, and now my kids play there. Uh, I mean, I play pickleball, I play tennis. Uh, I mean, I think you've captured it well with the all wheels. I mean, that's tricky to get that in there as well, and the basketball and the splash pad in an adventure area. So in, in my mind, um, as of right now, I don't really have any questions. I just want to acknowledge that you've captured a lot of the things that our community wants. So thank you. Thank you. And I am going to try and focus on questions so that we can come back to the comments later, but no offense taken. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Culperson. Thank you. Um, and through the mayor, and I echo Will's comments about the thoroughness of the report. Uh, my question is about the parking uh, space and, and just the, um, uh, I was certainly pleased to see there's going to be more parking for bicycles envisaged, um, but what was the rationale or driver for increasing parking spaces around the park? Um, I can I can only assume you must expect there would be a lot more traffic or users in the park uh, under the current the new configuration than the current one. Mr. Mayor, the the rationale there was to make things a bit safer. Um, we wanted to, on the one hand, take advantage of the park boundary, which. Um, is presently kind of out in the paved part of Henderson. So we wanted to kind of swell the park westward in order for that to happen. And that gives us room for a pathway, uh, maybe some more trees along that western edge. Um, and in so doing, um, the parking will go from, from perpendicular to parallel. So we'll lose a little bit in that sense. Um, and then this gives, um, certainly for families, for uh, those with uh, accessibility challenges, um, having a parking lot proper um, it just makes, it regularizes the movement of cars 
kids and 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 wheelchairs and and walkers um and just sets up a, a better entry sequence a safer entry sequence thank you is there any uh, director weckand thank you um I echo Will's comments because, uh, as you pointed out, there was a lot of input and um, you pulled together a lot of that input into a not a very large space. Um, I, my questions are around, uh, I have two questions. Um, with your experience, parks and playground space and uh, knowledge of the declining involvement and participation of girls, uh, in sport and being active. I'm wondering if you have any ideas or if there's any thought that's been put into that with this plan. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but it's sort of the front of my mind and safety. We've talked about lighting and, and that sort of thing, what happens. Um, so if there's any thoughts on that. And then is there, um, it sort of tags on to the biking, um, you know, if families are biking to the park or walking to the park, is there a walking trail or biking trail um, for people to get to different points in the colored area, uh, the concept plan by foot or bike that are lit and yeah, thanks. Maybe I'll, Mr. Mayor, I'll ask ahead, the, the last question first. Sure. Um, uh, <coughs> with, with the image up on the screen, there is a perimeter pathway that goes maybe not surprisingly, all the way around the park. <laughs> and then comes right back down through the middle, right? So that's pedestrian only, uh, pedestrian slash bikes. Um, you'll never find a commuter on it, I hope. Um, so, you know, they would be, it would be designed for strolling, walking, recreation purposes. Um, so you'll be able to walk pretty much anywhere in the park. And then this north-south route here um, gives a dry access because this is now all grass or informal. Uh, it's got some goat, goat tracks through it. So there, there will be ample uh, walkability to the park. Um, uh, the, the question about um, how we uh, find gender balance in, in parks is, is near and dear to us. I was the uh, lead designer uh, when we created the Ambleside Skate Park and we, one of the first things we did was go into the high school and talk to girls in grades 8, 9 and 10 because we were observing this back in the, in the 90s. And one of the things that we learned then and has come through a lot of evidence now is that um, girls do want to be involved. Um, they're just sometimes, not always, a bit more tentative. So places where, where uh, people can, not just girls, but even more timid boys like I was, uh, can watch from a bit of a distance, a safe place to sit, um, see and be seen, all those things that you know, young, young people of, of all genders want to do. So I think that, that that starts to happen really nicely in this northwest uh, 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 part of the park. Um, the, the details around that, uh, obviously yet to be, uh, yet to be determined, but I think that's one of the reasons why the all wheels park and the, the basketball adventure play, there's enough perch, sit, watch, get involved if you want, don't get involved if you don't want, uh, places that, uh, uh, through the next round of design that can happen. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Terrian. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, quick question, just... Um, you've done a good job of getting like a lot of stuff in a small space and I just wonder about a lot of stuff in a small space and is there enough space to do the things that are there and in particular it's the free play I'm cons questioning or wondering about and where you have like the all wheels piece the basketball and then also the the backstop for doing practice um, racket sport how do you see that like working cohesively and collaboratively with a bunch of neighborhood kids going on in there? Thank you. Mr. Mayor, the commissioner is absolutely correct. There is not enough space in this park to accommodate all the needs, um, especially if we wanted to green it up to plant trees. Um, a couple of our options um, looked, to, I think we called it the green heart option, where we shrunk the, the western um, playing field um, 
but we really felt that the, 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 the existing playing fields and diamonds needed to stay. Um, we, we really wanted to make sure we tried to accommodate uh, tennis and pickleball as best we could. Um, but you're, you're absolutely correct. It's, it's tough to squeeze all of these things in there. And uh, we think that, you know, properly done, this, this area here uh, on the south side of the field house, um, kind of working uh, into this sort of triangular-shaped piece of land up against the third, third baseline of the, of the Big Diamond, um, will be able to function nicely that way. Um, and, and during those times of the year when there are not active sports being played on the playing field, there's, there's lots of pick-up frisbee and, and kick the ball around and catch. And um, there, there isn't, it's not the kind of park you would naturally go to to, to have a family picnic. Um, that may be, not sure we could squeeze that in, but, but um, yeah, I mean, s some things kind of had to fall off the table. And, and I think if there's, if, if there, I'm sure there's many weaknesses to this plan, Mr. Mayor, but uh, the, the lack of, of significant more green space is certainly one of them. Thank you, and I apologize. I was in a little time warp there. Not the vice chair, Mr. Culbertson, <laughs> now the vice chair. Ex-vice chair, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Terry. Thanks, just a follow-up. I was, um, thanks for that answer on, on the green space. I was curious about the all wheels space being big enough. And I'm just gonna throw this out there because I have to. We have like, as a, as a commission member, we have a lot of tennis courts up at Henderson. We have a bubble like two blocks away here at Oak Bay Rec Center. And I know, like I read the appendices, we got a lot of, and I was at several of the um, um, interactive engagement sessions. We got a lot of feedback about keeping tennis in this neighborhood. And I understand that. And to your point about it can't be all things to everybody, I, I just wonder about the value of having like m more space for all the all wheels or that kind of thing or to make it so that the practice bo a backboard for racket sports isn't sort of in conflict with the all wheels space because it appears to be that to me but I could be wrong and I'm happy for you to tell me that I am thanks here go ahead Mr. Mayor, uh, great observation, and there's no reason why the um, the practice uh, wall can't be used from the inside of the court. Obviously, if people are playing a game, you, you can't use it. Um, I've been playing tennis for 30 years, as of this year, actually, and I've I've played on hit thousands of balls against walls that were on the inside of courts and then get kicked off when someone comes along so so it could be could be flipped or it could be used both ways for that matter um, the the one of the one of the desires that we want to try to uh, to satisfy was the all family idea so you know not all kids want to be in the splash park uh, not all kids want to be playing basketball or or learning how to play play tennis via pickleball which is starting to happen um, so it's kind of it, it's a mix um, um, and we you know we, we heard about it we didn't want to create another Vic West skate park that was not on right so there there's some things in this plan Mr. Mayor that that I should have said right off the top this is not the place for an outdoor pool this is not the place for uh for uh, a major skate park um you've already got a lot going on there you just can't get those kind of things in here uh, thank you Mr. Lees yeah. uh oh uh Director Buckland thank you my question tags on a little bit to that uh, with respect to whatever may occur in the future, you know, we aspire to doing it well, knowing that we have this amount of space. We don't have an all wheels park elsewhere in Oak Bay. We have many tennis courts. I appreciate the idea of the, you know, uh, you may want to do multiple things within your day or different aged people might be wanting to do different activities here. The orientation of the tennis courts, um, I know we're not going to be hosting any ATP tour tennis there. However, I did hear some feedback at Monterey at the session that the orientation of the tennis courts, um, well, I heard, wouldn't work. I mean, you can put a tennis court wherever you want. But is that going to be an issue, um, the orientation of with the sun? I don't play a lot of tennis, but... <laughs> I, I did receive that comment. Mr. Lees? 
uh, Mr. Mayor, more than happy to answer that question. I was playing yesterday in the sun in courts that were almost exactly oriented this way. Um, uh, and the day before, courts that were oriented due south at about the, which is the correct way to do it, but one way or the other, when the, the sun gets in your eyes when you're taking a high ball and you're smashing it, right? Other than that, uh, for most of us that aren't smashing the tennis ball too hard or too often, um, the orientation of the courts isn't, isn't as big a deal as, as, it's not ideal, but the reason we did it, and thank you for the opportunity to answer this, is that picture these uh, at 90 degrees, and like straight up and down. The, we would have ended up with this canyon of chain link fence right and so this gives a far more um, nuanced approach into the core of the park rather than walking down through walls of chain link and so that was the one of the, the one of the main reasons it also gives a much more interesting space on the west and the north side of both the pickleball and the um, and the tennis. Um, imagine these uh, again going straight north and south. We'd end up with this little piece of bacon strip shaped land on the north side that's really tough to do much with and so by adjusting them just by 15 or 20 degrees we're able to get a much uh, more, I, th I think we get better utility out of the space. Thank you. Yes. Um, just a point of clarification. Um, is the, um, what, what exactly, um, it's a new term for me, all wheels court, just what are you, what, what kind of things would happen there? I just want, I, I could guess, but I'd like to hear what, what, how you see it. And secondly, <clears throat> question, the um, pickleball court looks to me very much like a, the same size all around as a tennis court. And I'm wondering if it can be used also as a tennis court. Are, are, there, are there in fact two tennis courts there if you want them? Mr. Mayor, the last question first. Yes, that's the intention. That's why we sized the pickleball the way it could be in, in the event that there there needed to be a tennis, uh, 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 another court there. It gets really confusing with all those lines on the court. And we, you know, we hear this over and over, not just in this community, but other communities. Nobody likes all those lines. Um, in fact, there was a big argument over, you know, why couldn't pickleball just work within the lines of tennis? <laughs> but I won't go there. Um, uh, so yes, it could, it could, it could change. Um, and then, what was your first question? All wheels, all wheels. The all wheels. Yes, thank you. Uh, so picture, picture young kids, you know, eight, ten, maybe twelve, scooters. Uh, trikes, um, maybe some entry-level skateboarding, but nothing fancy. No, there might be some gradation, but no, it's not a skate park, right? So you don't get the clackety clack of the, of um, so it's a, a mix of maybe even some some rollerblading. You know, it's kind of out now, but if it comes back in, uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's bring it up to the council here. If there's any questions from members of council. Someone's got to go. Councillor Nee, and then Councillor Braithwaite. Um, yeah, so thank you very much uh, for the report and the presentation. Thank you to Parks and Rec Commission members for all the input and uh, eyes on this as it um, unfolded as well. Um, so uh, let me just first follow up on the question around the um, all wheels multi sport thing because it, it led to a question I had around the engagement part and I noticed that you engaged 47 grade 7 uh, youth and I was wondering if there were any other youth I was thinking of the older youth were they also engaged Mr. Lees yes Mr. Mayor and Ray maybe you can help me with that a bit because I think you were more directly involved in the high school part than I was yeah uh, your worship uh not um, formally, as as was done with the grade seven students, but in the open houses that uh, that we had, there were quite a large number of families that came with their you know parents came with their children, and and uh, those children did um, you know fill out the sticky notes and put them on and, and engaged. It was actually nice to see that they participated, and uh, so we did get some feedback from that age group. Thank you. So um, through your chair. Um, so, Mr. Herm, would they have been the the high school kids, or are those? They, I would imagine if they were with their parents, they were the younger 
children. Would that be so? Uh, through the chair, yeah, I would say the majority of those folks were maybe more middle school or just entering uh, high school. There were a few, um, I would say, old teens or, or young 20s people who came in small groups, three or four at a time. But, I, you know, I wouldn't say they were huge numbers, but there were some of those people. Uh, through your chair. So Mr. Lees, is it? So, yeah, thank you. Um, so is there, it sounds to me from what I'm hearing that that teenage group was not really directly engaged. And if that's so, um, is that an issue here? Or how, I'm just interested how you would respond to that. Yes, Mr. Mayor, of course, happy to respond. I don't think it's an issue. Um, uh, I think that We've we got really good representation through the soccer and baseball, uh, and that's largely um, young people's sports. Um, and uh, and 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 I and I, th I think we can trust their um, their input as to you know that's why we still have two big soccer fields here. Um, so I think I think we got uh, as well uh, um, proxy uh, um, engagement um, staff. Um, Members of council, uh, commissioners, you folks are dialed in, and I, you know, so I, so I, I I'm pretty, pretty sure there. I, I, I wouldn't say that's a structural weakness. In short, okay, um, yeah. Um, Director Moore, sorry to interrupt you there, Councillor Nay. Uh, so I'm a high school counselor at Oak Bay High. So there's lots of, I mean, teenagers are not, they're pretty apathetic when you have to get out and go do something, right? So uh, there's lots of uh, interest amongst them if they didn't come out with their feet. Uh, there's definitely a lot of feedback that I received kind of informally around uh, having an all wheels um, park uh, part of it. So yes, I think that's totally legitimate. Thank you. That's even more reassuring. So the the other question I had was uh, with the field house, and I know we're not quite there. You're kind of more putting out the vision. I appreciate that. But when we get to that place about really, you've got some designs uh, uh, here for what that might look like. And uh, my question is, um, and you spoke also about in the future, we could think about partnerships. And one of the partnership that's available currently has to do with the daycare money and I think they're offering up to a million dollars and so my question to you is um, from what you've so far um, the input that you've so far received is there any uh, receptivity or interest in using that field house I, I mean that's the current proposal but could a partnership around daycare uh, be because that's what was there previously, uh, be something that could be considered. Mr. Lees? Mr. Mayor, yes, of course it could be considered. However, I would caution uh, Council about the inclusion of yet another demanding program uh, element. In, in, in the park, um, especially daycare that has a very specific safety, outdoor play area, uh, bounded uh, requirements, uh, which aren't always as public as you, as you might think. Um, and it would significantly expand the footprint of what we're showing now. So here in a park that's already fairly heavily paved and, and although there is a roof on it, you know, making that roof even bigger um, and the necessary services to get to and, and maintain uh, an even bigger building, I, I am, I'm not sure that would be the, the, the best thing in the core of the park. Thank you for your input. And then just I, I concur with um, uh, Director Hoffman who was speaking about the arts thing when we get there and other issues would be around ways that we can consider the history of the place which you've noted in your in your report and uh, First Nations and art that's both sort of uh, pleasing to the eye but also possibly functional and you made a lot of comment about that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Braithwaite. Um, thank you. Actually, uh, Councillor Ney asked a couple of the questions that I, I um, that I had on my list, um, and so did uh, a couple of the directors as well. Um, but just to touch on them a little bit, um, as far as the field house goes, the current field house that's there that's there. Could you remind me, Mr. Lees, um, 
what the cost would be to take that building down because I think that's often something that people consider that it shouldn't be that expensive to take a building like that down, but in actual fact, it, there is a large cost associated with that. One of these gentlemen might be able to find it at the very back of the report, but my recollection is that it's in the neighborhood of $300,000. So I think that probably confirms your suspicions, right? Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, thank you. And so, um, and through you, Mayor, um, I mean, when we look at, when I look at this plan, um, uh, to me, that field house is such an integral part of the, of the whole park, and it would be wonderful if we could have um, something that would be shovel-ready um, so that we could get, we could look at some of the grants that, that might become available. Um, and so I'm hoping that that's something that, um, that we can kind of come to an agreement with quickly around the council table as far as uh, wanting to have a field house there. Um, the other thing question I had was the uh, around the paths and I think it was uh, Suzanne that you were talking about it um, the paths that are go around the park they're all fully accessible to um, wheelchair etc is that correct that's correct mr. chair and except through the center that one is not or is no I think the goal would be for every path to be accessible all the time Good, thank you. Um, and then the other question I have is in regards to traffic around the park. Um, I think that there was a question in regards to why are we increasing the parking. Um, and I think one of the main reasons that we're increasing the parking is that this, to me, this park is on the outskirts of Oak Bay, basically, and so we have people coming from many different um, municipalities. We have them coming from Victoria and from Saanich to utilize this park, and I think that once we redo this park um, down the road, uh, we'll have even more people visiting us from other municipalities. And you were correct in that we're continuing on with the with the sports, the baseball and the soccer, and that um, inevitably causes teams from other jurisdictions to come into our area to play. But my question would be around um, a traffic study, and I'm wondering, and perhaps this is more a question for Mr. Herman, if there's um, any thought of having a traffic study done, um, especially uh, on the Henderson Road south. I believe there's a, a path that goes from the end of Henderson Road, and it cuts across, and often the kids use that um, to get to the high school or to Willow School, and I've been approached by um, some residents in that it's a it's quite a dangerous intersection there that Henderson crosses I can't remember the name of the road right there Newton um, and uh, and there's no crosswalk or anything there and I think that that might be something with increased use of the park and even without increased use of the park that we should possibly look at so maybe you can address that yeah through the chair the uh, the engineering department did uh, provide comment on uh, on the plan early on in the process and and uh, given that we had heard about uh, certainly from some neighbors of the park the re request for some traffic calming measures uh, the engineering department concurred with that as far as going beyond that uh, to a full traffic study that wasn't indicated but I could certainly continue discussing that with the engineering department thank you through you chair um, I think that would be wise I think that the input that when I was at a couple of the sessions, the input from the people that live around that area, they thought that would be really important. And then there was one other aspect, which was um, in the uh, the parking lot to the west, I think, where, which is closest to the um, to the uh, the lawn bowling. Um, that there might be is that east. East, sorry, east, whatever. Um, that's why my husband has to do all of the navigation when we go on our hikes because I would be getting us to the wrong spot. Um, uh, so to, to the east, that, that there might be um, an opportunity to perhaps put in a couple of um, wheelchair ex or wheelchair spots there, handicap spots there. Uh, and so that might be something that we would look at as well. And I think I'll, I'll leave it to others to ask more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you so much for the presentation. Okay. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, it's great to see uh, excitement around this space and uh, the old racetrack uh, la lands being used uh, for uh, uh, more purposes. Um, I, I'm sad to see horses are not included, but I guess you can't have everything. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of, uh, of, of uh, I guess, little questions. Um, um, I'll try to be quick. Just fire away. All right. 
Um, so uh, if you could speak a bit more about the all wheels uh, aspect with respect to um, uh, noise. I noticed uh, some of the comments uh, talked about par parkour as being a possibility in there and um, it looks like there's undulations of some sort. Is, is it anticipated to be all concrete? Uh, what, what's the idea there in terms of, especially what it'll lo look like from a three-dimensional perspective? Yes, delighted, Mr. Chair. Um, parkour, for those not familiar with it, is sort of um, um, like gymnastics on different elements. Um, uh, doing crazy things on low walls, sometimes even high walls. Um, um, looks like it takes a heck of a lot of strength and more courage than I have, um, but it it uh, uh, is not likely to be a full-on parkour park that needs a lot of space, number one. And even so, it's it's a quiet activity, uh, I guess, unless you fall over, uh, hurt yourself. Um, the undulation, yes, there would be some because that's kind of the fun of being on a scooter or on a trike or uh, it, it gives you some elevation and gives you some momentum. Um, we intentionally did uh, are not suggesting this be even so much as an entry level skate park because of the clackety clack. Um, and you know, large one of the, one of the reasons we're here is to try to mitigate the noise that's coming from the park now, um, with the advent of uh, of pickleball. So we've tried to move the pickleball as far away from residents as we can. Um, and so the last thing we want to do is create another noise source. Um, so it's fairly, fairly, uh, yes, mostly paved to answer the other part of your question. Uh, thank you. Um, by may we continue. Um, directly north of the tennis and the pickle, uh, or, yeah, no, I guess north of tennis, is what looks like a basketball court. Uh, I presume that would be flat. And uh, if you could just talk about the, the transition between the flat and the basketball and how, uh, what the fencing might look like in that area. Um, I, I can't quite picture it. Mr. Lees? Yes, Mr. Mayor, the, that's exactly right. The, those are two basketball keys you see there um, uh, at uh, opposed uh, so that you could play a, a pickup game across both both hoops. Um, it would be a flat surface, not undulating. Um, the, the, the requirement for fencing there is relatively small. Um, they, you know, it's not like tennis uh, in that sense where you, you have to contain the ball. Um, so uh, some, some low barrier to keep um, kids from the uh, adventure play, you know, kind of screaming over into the basketball. Um, but uh, we, we've seen this and done this on a number of different occasions uh, uh, where the, those activities blend rather nicely together. <coughs> Uh, that's great. Um, and uh, basketball and noise, um, any con question or a, a, a comment you want to make about that, please? Yes, there is noise that goes along with a tap, tap, tap of the basketball. Um, I'm told from residents in Kitts Point in Vancouver that have had their share of comment on basketball that it's not as, as irritating as pickleball. Um, <laughs> but to each his own, I suppose. Um, I don't anticipate the, the amount of noise uh, or, for that matter, the size of the court to be such that you be, you're going to be attracting a, you know huge numbers of pickup games and and you know it, it's it's this these are all meant to be entry level learn the skills type of facilities right. not tournament level elite facilities. Well, I, I I imagine uh, that, uh, that the attractiveness of the site is going to pull people in in I wouldn't say all hours but certainly maybe extended hours, and then when the kids go home, uh, potentially adults will definitely want to uh, move in and take advantage of of these wonderful facilities. So I do appreciate the extra parking in there, and I, I, I anticipate that parking will get well used. If I touch on the parking for a moment, um, the uh, is there a plans or possibility of car charging plugs? I imagine in there, or or, or that would be a question for engineering. I, I think it would be a question, yes. for Mr. Chair, question right. for engineering, but I don't see why you wouldn't in this day and age. Absolutely. And uh, touching again on power, um, uh, when I was a, a stay-at-home dad with my kids and I would uh, go to that splash park to relax and let the kid away from me, um, I, I uh, noticed there weren't very many power stations for Wi-Fi and those sort of things. Uh, do you anticipate there would be a, like uh, something available, like maybe what's at the park, uh, at, at the libraries? I don't know how, how we could do this for an outdoor uh, facility, but if something for the moms and the dads who uh, just need five minutes on their phones. Or maybe it's a Wi-Fi free zone, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Uh, so ultimately, <laughs> a decision for council to to make. Uh, good touche. 
All right. I, so, I'm a little nervous about this the high voltage water <laughs> park combination too. Oh no, low a, voltage, absolutely low voltage. Although, um, uh, let's see, lithium ion batteries is, is, is a concern, definitely. Um, so uh, the, the, the fencing, um, uh, I, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do in terms of uh, uh, um, minimize the uh, the tunnel feel. Um, I was uh, uh, I'm pleased to see some members of the Oak Bay Tennis Club in the uh, in the audience, and hopefully they'll they'll come forward. I was then wondering whether uh, there could be room for a second tennis um, court, but uh, I'm I'm I, I see what you're trying to do in terms of the uh, the the the, uh, the tennis uh, practice wall that sort of overlays the uh, undulating surface of the uh, um, what do you call it. Uh, Yes, I, I, I'm not quite sure how, how tennis players are going to practice against that wall while they're running into and out of an undulating area. If you could maybe also talk about that, not necessarily conflicting space, but, but how do you see that transition occurring on, on that side? Well, Mr. Mayor, I think on that side of the wall it would have to be flat for a certain distance back from the, from the wall for sure, and so the undulation would be more along the perimeter. Um, and we're not we're not anticipating huge undulations of it, but being a tennis player myself, you, you cannot play on an undulating surface. So that would all have to be uh, landscape engineered. I much appreciate that. Um, uh, I, 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 I was looking around for a possible 3D view of this wonderful plan. I, I, it, 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 uh, I could only find the 2D ones. Maybe it's in there somewhere, and I just just couldn't find it, but uh, it would be fantastic to, 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 to see uh, maybe uh, if the next opportunity comes forward, I don't know, um, uh, to have a sense of what uh, all the various fencing and various uh, paths and maybe a sense of where the trees might go and, and just what it might look like from a three-dimensional perspective. Um, is there anything that might be available? Mr. Mayor, we've, we've used for the purposes of, of a master plan, a vision, uh, what we call the precedent imagery. So, you know, a examples, many from Europe and, and a number from Scandinavia, actually, that were, were the, th these ideas have originated. Um, some of the textures, some of the colors, some of the fencing um, for this level of master plan and, and the level of effort that we've been commissioned to apply. Um, the next r level of design is where we would get into the 3D modeling. I'm rushing, obviously. I, wa I want to see everything. Um, so uh, the let me speak about the buildings then. I absolutely love what you've done with the field house. I think it's great. Uh, washrooms are, are sorely, sorely needed there. But I do notice that there's uh, two other large buildings uh, and other outbuildings with respect to the lawn bowling club. I just found out a week ago, maybe it's news to, to, to others as well, that we own those buildings. Oak Bay District uh, owns those. Um, uh, could the plan be altered maybe to uh, have a shared facility with the Lawn Bowling Club that might possibly tie in with, uh, oh, I don't know, daycare by at, at certain times and lawn bowling at other times, or maybe daycare here and lawn bowling there. I'm not quite sure, but, but uh, I, I see some, some possibilities in there. I wanted to know whether you had considered um, uh, either repurposing or replacing some of those other buildings on the property. Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll take a stab at it, and then maybe Ray can jump in. But those buildings are actively used by the Lawn Bowling Club right now. So they, they've got winter carpet bowling in there. Um, they've recently put some improvements into, into those buildings. Um, we thought about that. Um, I don't recall that we broached it with lawn bowling to locate the field house there. But if you, just, if you look at it as the field house as the core of the park, Shifting it even that much further over, it's not going to work as well as far as a field house for the whole park, uh, especially if, we, if we're if uh, we looking for some partners with uh, especially um, uh, soccer clubs. Um, we just didn't think that was practical, but but the uh, director may have, have further information for us. Mr. Herman? Uh, yeah, Your Worship, there, there's a license to occupy those buildings for, with the Lawn Bowling Club that... Uh, um, so we certainly haven't been in any sort of discussions or made an effort to force anything down their throat, but we have had ongoing discussions with them about uh, potentially opening up those buildings to more public use. Um, but over the last few years, they have, as Mr. Lees has indicated, they've um, expanded their offerings in those buildings and they're doing more off-seasonal activities in there. So the opportunities are, I, I suppose, dwindling as they 
increase their use of those buildings. But certainly something that we can continue to chat with them about. I was, um, I, I was saddened to hear that uh, uh, many of their windows were vandalized uh, not that long ago. So uh, I'm, I'd, I'd be pleased to see more eyes uh, on this property and uh, on, on in this area. And I certainly wouldn't wouldn't suggest moving the field house into that area, but potentially either extending it or having uh, maybe one of those buildings replaced with something that was more multi-purpose uh, that would continue to be used by them um, uh, with their with their license to occupy, but also could be used for something on the other side of the, of the uh, uh, proverbial fence uh, facing the other way. Uh, that's all. Um, as, as an idea, to, uh, full of lots of ideas here. Uh, uh, now, there's only so many uh, ideas and so much money we have. Um, if I could uh, also have you, I'm only halfway through my list, so I'll be quick. Um, water management. Uh, I know that certain parts of this park are have soggy portions. Um, climate change is going to bring uh, pretty intensive rains. We have the, uh, the uh, uh, not the Singapore Sling, the Pineapple Express, thank you, um, that comes through every once in a while. Um, any suggestions on, on um, alleviations or um, mitigations that uh, might need to be done with respect to uh, water? Mr. Mayor, a couple places we've talked about uh, around the perimeter, putting in uh, some rain gardens, certainly some pollinator gardens. Whether the two can overlap um, is a uh, challenge for the horticulturists in the crowd. Um, but yes, I mean, these, these uh, surfaces, these grass surfaces are one giant sponge. And you should look at them, at all your grass surfaces that way. Not artificial turf, but grass surfaces soak up a huge amount of water. And, um, and of course, the soccer players will tell you when they soak up too much and they, you don't drain it away. Um, um, I'm told that they're pretty well drained right now. Um, but uh, that top uh, foot of soil is, is one giant sponge, and that helps with rainwater management. Uh, so the last thing is uh, thank you very much. I very much appreciate how you've worked uh, the, the compromise and uh, I guess I won't work hard on a second tennis court knowing that the pickle court, pickleball court could be repurposed if necessary. Thank you. All right. We're done. Thank you, Councillor Zilker. Councillor Appleton, then Councillor Patterson. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Uh, I, I, just, I had one question just regarding the staging and and I and I understand very much sort of the logic presented in the report as to why the staging would take place in the order that it's that it's uh, well in that it's presented in terms of that the the field house is the large spend essentially it's the large budget item and the things being staged after that um, I'm wondering whether you could comment just on the idea of if uh, just uh, sort of flipping that around and saying, uh, if we were to take advantage of, uh, to to expend budget to do some of the improvements in the park before the actual field house was created, and whether or not, I've, I've seen in some cases where there's been sort of an, an exigency to, to provide facilities, but without having the, the full-blown building in place, uh, whether there you could sort of comment in your experience, have you seen something in the way of a... Uh, of a temporary building, a modular building that might function to, as a, a washroom and slash change room that could service the proposed facilities if you did the, the enhancements to the park first and then looked at what the, the field house would look like afterwards, if that, if that makes sense. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I, th I, I certainly understand the question, and, and I think it could make sense. Um, recognizing your budgets, you know, you don't, you don't have two million bucks kicking around for, for new building. And uh, so what are you going to do? One of the key issues is that the water for the water park runs through the building. <laughs> and so there's some site servicing issues that have to be squared away. Um, so, and so the moment you tear down one, you, you, you know, it's, it's this Pandora's box of infrastructure improvements, which I'm sure you're seeing played out <laughs> across many parts of your community. Um, so it's not as simple as, as just putting in a modular uh, in lieu of, um, although that's, uh, that's certainly a suggestion that, uh, that could be incorporated into the implementation plan. I, I know that uh, a lot of people, myself, included think that that the lacrosse box should come down sooner than later because it's an eyesore and and it's, I wouldn't say it's dangerous but um, it you know it, it doesn't look good and you know what what else could we do with that area could we work in one of the could we do a better job of at least one of the courts at least temporarily so that we're, we're providing a uh, because those courts even as they sit the tennis courts as they sit now um, for pickleball or tennis are not good you know the quality of play is not good so um, I, we proposed 
an option, a sequence of stages that could occur, there is an infinite number of ways it could happen. Thank you very much. And through you, uh, Your Worship, just maybe a, a quick question to staff. I, I understand that, and, and further to what Mr. Lees is saying, and, and I definitely understand that there is uh, some, uh, conf not confusion, but I guess lack of information around the servicing to the existing building and that there are issues around that, that type of thing. And so I don't know whether staff feels comfortable sort of opining on what we might be looking at just in terms of logistics of getting the servicing uh, straightened out, or whether there's whether that's been explored at all, and if and if it hasn't, then then it hasn't. But I just figured to ask the question, Mr. Herman. Uh, through you, Your Worship, I, I wouldn't say it's been investigated to the nth degree. I mean, we're obviously aware of the issues there, and and uh, again, work with the engineering department to to take what is being recommended here and start to formulate some plans in that regard, but. Um, we don't have details laid out in that, with that type of work as of this time. Uh, just two quick comments to follow. Thank you uh, to staff. Uh, just two quick comments, I think. Just wanted to uh, echo what Councillor Braithwaite mentioned with regards to uh, the traffic study. I feel that's a, that's a really important key. I think that when we're looking at the plan for the park, I think we need to consider the, the traffic issue holistically at the same time. I don't think it makes any sense to look at the two things separate from one another. So we are, as, as, some, as, as many people have said, we're probably going to draw more people to the park. Uh, I think we need to look really carefully at what the traffic circulation looks like around there. Uh, and also uh, echoing what Councillor Ney mentioned regarding the potential use of the building. Uh, I don't want to constrain or fetter the potential uses of the, of the field house. And, and I think the design as presented of the field house is also quite good. Uh, but I would point out exactly as, as Councillor Ney has mentioned that the, uh, the, the potential funding for childcare spaces was, wasn't available at the time that this whole process was launched. And so I don't think it was really contemplated in the initial scope of work. So not to, uh, modify uh, the, the scope of work. I understand that the consultants working with what would they were directed to do, but I, I think this is a, a pressing need and concern and something for, for council to consider. Thank you. Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor, and through you to Mr. Lee. Um, there's been very good questions, and I, I obviously the, the plan is very exciting and has been well received. I'm just wondering if there um, are any comments that you could offer about with this enhanced facility, what we would anticipate in terms of increased use, frequency, capacity, you know, kind of what this would take us to a new level. So what do we, what do we gain by that to the user experience and the volume of it? Mr. Lees. Mr. Chair, that's a great question, um, and I think it goes right back to the vision of uh, of the park that, that I stated right off the off the top. This is a, it's still a neighborhood park, um, and we've quite intentionally, um, you know, not put in tournament level facilities. Um, the ball fields are and and the um, and the soccer pitches still are for community use. Um, so that you know the traffic, the overall use, and the load on the park, I don't see it changing radically. A better spray park is going to draw more families for sure. Um, that's what the community said they wanted, and <clears throat> I think we, you know, it's it's not going to be um, um, it's not going to be Disneyland, um, but it's certainly going to be way better than what you have now. Um, so I think that'll be uh, the summertime draw. Will will be the will be the water park. Obviously, you, you have uh, you have some pickleball there now. You have a little more <coughs> tennis there now. So I think that kind of that's going to be a wash in the end. Um, the perimeter walkway may attract more people that presently uh, are going elsewhere to take a walk where they don't get their feet wet or where the surface is is, is a bit more stable. So that's going to draw a few more people. But I don't think we're going to see an exponential change in the, in the, in the use of this park. And I, I think what we've developed, uh, um, there's sufficient what we call carrying capacity for, for the anticipated use. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I have a few questions too, so I'll get to mine. Uh, th and thank you, Mr. Lees. I, I, I certainly appreciate this is a 
uh, all the work that's gone into this is there's a lot of very positive aspects of this. It gets the, the brain turning over things. So, um, and yeah, I just want to express my shock at the $300,000. The entire land that was built on, including all the surrounding lands, was bought for $185,000, including the demolition of the entire racetrack at the time. So yeah, that's a lot of money to take down a cinder block building. Um, and I would just uh, iterate my support for the discussion around uh, traffic, and especially um, you know uh, moving the bikes and things through from Haltine, and if we're going to make this more of a destination. Um, a lot of my questions are really my primary thing is really around the field house. And I, and I guess I come to this from the perspective of this is not currently a play, a park that, that, that keeps people sticky. So when they come here, they often come for an hour or two, uh, then until the kids are hungry or something goes wrong and they, and they leave again. And there isn't sort of a, that anchor there. So if, you know, there's no place to go to get a bite to eat or even a sort of an attractive sip of water really at the place. So, uh, it, it sort of dissipates very quickly. And so I, I see a lot of this bringing people in, but I, I would really look at that field house is how do we make that, uh, you know, an amenity that, that keeps people there. So having a concession, and maybe the concession moves from the hot dog stand on the, on the field to this, um, but ha provides that uh, and in, this, in the wintertime when the soccer games are on to, to serve up hot coffee and things. Like, is there... There, in the in the plan here, there isn't any sort of sense of a of a cafe style pieces. That was that considered as part of the 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 design criteria or, or consideration. I know there's a there's possibly a concession in the building, but is that as far as it went? Well, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I think that's exactly what happens at the next stage. Is let's confirm the program as we call it. You know, making sure do we have enough bathrooms, changing rooms. Although we probably don't we don't do changing rooms and showers anymore. You know. Back in the day when I was playing soccer, you'd have a shower in the field house. That doesn't happen anymore. People just go home. Um, but, you know, is it, sh should the concession space be larger? Should there be a second story where there can be some assembly? Uh, um, all those things would get proofed out during the, uh, the next round of, uh, round of design. You're absolutely right. This, this could create some stickiness there. Um, we've shown just very conceptually ample apron space around the building where people can mingle. Chairs and tables and umbrellas can be put out. Uh, the advantage of the second stories, it, of course, you have a better purview of what's happening in the rest of the park. Um, so there's a whole bunch of reasons why that would to really be the keystone. Okay, no, I appreciate that. So I, some of my questions with some of those specifics, because we have some uh, gaps in our meeting space in terms of room size, uh, uh, those things, and, and also would probably be informed by, you know, parks and rec, you know, are there other uses for, say, meeting space in the rec center that could be better utilized if we move some of the meeting space over? To, like those kind of questions, I think. So but if those haven't been gone through, then that's, I'll leave that because I think those, if that, those are for futures. Um, I guess the other question, I, I, or big question I had was the West Field. Um, and I, I'm still not entirely clear. I, I've, my understanding of the usage of that field isn't that it's used that much for soccer currently. It's the, the Eastern Field is used quite extensively for, for soccer. So uh, in, the, in one of those designs, the, the green center, that, that field was shrunk and it gave more space for that, uh, for, for those other activities in the northwest corner. Um, can you just inform me as to the, as the, the needs analysis for that, that western soccer field? Yes, Mr. Mayor, the, the information we got during the open houses was that's a, that's a key practice field. Um, but these gentlemen uh, are more intimately involved with the actual programming of it. Chris, is that something you prepared to answer? Mr. Heidele. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, one thing we have heard from uh, Bayes United is, is that they were adamant about keeping both of the fields in regards to soccer. Uh, they anticipate uh, growth in the club and wanted to maintain the full-size fields uh, for both uh, west and east. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, the other question I have here was just, uh, I guess, one other small thing with that. That field, uh, the, 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 when it's working as a baseball field, uh, currently has quite a bit of green space along the foul line. And now that foul line is almost directly adjacent to the walkway entering into the park. Is that a safety concern in terms of having that, that landing area the way it is? Do you mean the first or the third base foul line, Mr. Mayor? Uh, the first base foul line on the western field, right. the small field. Right. I don't think we've changed the location of the backstop. You know, that, that uh, 
Diamond is still partly on the soccer pitch and um, um, I mean we, are, we already have activities uh, in that general zone so I, I think we're I think we're okay I think we're okay because oh, there's yeah. a lacrosse box essentially along that foul line yeah, right there now. Is no, so there's, yeah. no, there's no sort of people milling around and in, in, in that area where this is much closer to that I just I'm throwing the question out there yeah. as we're getting into those yeah. pieces um, fair comment one other question I just had on this, because uh, part of the constraint of all this is these these pillars of chain link fence that manage the uh, the tennis court and pickleball court, and I appreciate the need for moving them in this direction and away from the things because of the noise. Was there any thought given in this process at the end of the day to kind of look at the the pickleball and tennis courts more holistically across the municipality? And I raise this because most of our tennis courts are actually not adjacent to houses. They're they're quite isolated. The only place they're adjacent to houses is actually in this park. And if the one sport on those is noisy, could we consider just putting the pickleball in a different location and using this for tennis courts? <laughs> uh, this is where a parks master plan would uh, <laughs> would really be a good idea, uh, where you'd look system wide holistically, Mr. Mayor. Uh, short answer is no. Uh, we did not look at other locations for uh, pickleball and tennis. Um, we looked generally at the supply of pickleball and tennis across the the, uh, the community and, and the region, um, but we did not look at alternate locations. Okay, thank you. And uh, last question. Uh, there's currently some very uh, ineffective but still used lights at the south end of the park uh, where soccer practice is held at nighttime. Um, and I don't see any lights in this at all. Is, is there an intention to keep some lighting just for that purpose on these fields so that that practice can continue? Well, you're uh, touching on a uh, a soapbox of mine, which I, I'll try not to get onto, but generally keeping parks dark at night, I think, is 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 the way to go. Uh, recognizing that there um, there there may be the need for more practice surfaces, but grass is not a great practice surface anyway. Um, uh, I mean, residents are up against these parks, and surely they're they're um, uh, fair for them to expect uh, some darkness uh, without having um, a lot of lights. My recommendation would be not to replace those, but rather to go with some low bollard LED lightings to make the pathway usable during sol uh, shoulder seasons, um, potentially even solar lights, um, which are becoming better and better, um, uh, more and more efficient. So uh, I would take the standards down and the, the tall standards and, and, and really um, go with low level light. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I any other questions from council or commission at this point? I'll, I'll open it up to the to the members of the public if you wish to come forward and ask questions. Uh, I'm going to try to stick to questions right now, and then we'll cycle back for additional comments after the fact, if that's all right. Uh, are there any questions of the uh, consultants or staff? Yeah, please. So the process here is just come forward to this middle stanchion, and if you just say your name and municipality of residence and. Uh, you can write down your name as well, if possible. Although Miss Adams, we know we know you how to spell your name. Uh, you can uh, think. Barbara Adams, and uh, I live uh, at 230 King George Terrace. I'm also Oak Bay Arts Laureate, and I want to thank uh, Jim for his fabulous questions. But I have one question about parks: uh, Are uh, is interactive art used often? Mr. Lees? Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor, especially when it comes to uh, water play. Um, there's lots of different ways that act, uh, art can and really, in my view, should be interactive. And maybe on pathways and maybe other areas so that uh, bending and climbing and other ways can be used is, is a lot of good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Anybody else like to come forward with any questions? Yeah, please come forward. Al Rathbone, Oak Bay, uh, neighbor to the park. Uh, I thank you, Mayor, for uh, reminding us all that the broader review of uh, facilities has not occurred, which frankly left me wondering why we were moving forward with this plan and looking for recommendation to support it uh, when we don't yet have that other information. Clearly, uh, that will be a concern that you'll address. Um, Mr. Lees, I was wondering, you mentioned in your summary that 
of those canvassed were in support of this. What do you think? Can you just, sorry, it's just normal to address through the chair of and course, also my apologies. To the yes, my apologies. Thanks, so, so my question is, the um, what would be necessary to improve that 53% score, which doesn't seem overwhelmingly supportive of the design as it is currently being offered up? Uh, Mr. Lees. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't think there's an easy answer to that question, <laughs> short of doubling the size of the park or, or reducing in half the number of things we're trying to get this park to do. This park is working exceptionally hard. And um, given all the different trade-offs that we've, uh, we've had to go through, that the community's had to go through, um, I, I actually think 53% is, is, is a pretty high mark. Um, whether or not, as you were saying, Mr. Mayor, maybe that western field gets shrunk down a bit, gives more room uh, for a green heart, uh, that, uh, that I think might, might nudge the numbers up a little bit. Um, uh, I think, frankly, if we put in four more tennis courts instead of one, that, that our numbers from those that responded would, would change radically. So, you know, there was a great response, but we have to keep in mind that largely we see responses of those that, that either don't like something or really like something. Thank you, Mr. Lees. A further question, if I could, Mr. Mayor. Please. Uh, with regard to the green space and, and the green heart people who are more difficult to organize, no doubt, than the soccer group, um, I, I'm wondering what direction you were given with regard to environmental sensitivity uh, around the design of, of, of the park, including uh, the materials that would be used, the reflective surfaces, the use of scarce resources, including water and energy use. Are those uh, parameters that uh, you were charged with addressing? Mr. Lees. Uh, Mr. Mayor, not specifically, but as, uh, as a, a longtime practicing landscape architect, these are things that are just part of good practice for us and our, our firm and the women that designed this plan. Um, and frankly, would be further explored in the next round of design. So things like surfaces uh, and um, and the overall environmental impact, the full uh, uh, net environmental impact of not only uh, the demolition of the materials and the rainwater harvesting and the pollinator gardens and the canopy cover, all those things would be in that equation during the next round. But at a master plan level, it's for a small uh, piece of geography like this, it's not normally done. Um, that, that sort of environmental lens isn't really used that, that much. Thank you, Mr. Lees. Thank you. Uh, one last question, if I could. Um, I'm having difficulty assessing the plan because I don't have a notion of how many square feet are involved. So when we're asking about the all-wheel park, uh, as an example, or if we're talking about the field house, not knowing what the footprint is of the field house makes it difficult to know whether or not it's likely to become a gathering place to have a drink or whether it's in fact going to service a different population. Uh, not knowing the size of the all-wheel park uh, I have difficulty imagining whether there's anything substantial that can occur when we have a basketball court that necessarily must be flat and we have a tennis uh, a wall that requires a flat surface. And so um, I'm wondering if I could ask the question about square footage. Sure, I think it's footprint. a very, very good question for all of us to help visualize. Do you, could you, do you have some local comparators in terms of size, like how the field house compares to, say, the Windsor Park Pavilion in terms of size? as laid out here, those sorts of things, you can just give some comparisons? Those details are actually in the, in the report, so if, uh, if anybody would like to delve into them further, they're all there. Uh, but but the, the footprint of the building is not going to be substantially different than what's there now it, because there's kind of two buildings there now. Um, so the overall footprint is going to be somewhat larger, but not, not three times or twice as large, number one. If you look at the water play and the adventure play, water play is about twice as large as it is now. Adventure play, of course, there's hardly any there. It's, it's almost three times as large. Um, the All Wheels Park is a, uh, just a, uh, a bit bigger than the existing water place. So that gives you kind of a sense of the, the scale of things here. Um, there's presently four tennis courts there now, and we're bringing those down to two. So uh, effectively, right? Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Rathbone.
Anybody else have any questions that wishes to come forward? Oh, okay. Well, I'll bring it back to this table and we'll invite the public back up for comment as well. Um, uh, but back to this table, I'll, I'll go to the Parks and Rec Commission. Is there any additional comments that anybody has uh, at this point? Yeah, Treasury Tarion. Hi, um, through you, Mayor, to Mr. Lees. I'm just wondering um, if on the perimeter um, pathway, I can see that becoming quite popular. I notice it's 1.5 meters and then the pathway through the center is two meters. If there's opportunity or space there in the design phase to widen it. I use a number of the multi-use paths around town and things <laughs> and I, I always find them a tad narrow when they get popular. And one and a half meters and you got a bike and a person walking a dog and maybe a stroller. It just seems a tad narrow. Um, and and sort of related to that same question is I notice you have the purple stars where you could put some activity um, fitness equipment. Um, I know in some places that can become quite popular and I'm wondering if there's enough space in, in the trail as well to have more of that if in the design phase we chose to do that. Thank you. So Lisa. Yes, Your Worship, that's exactly where it would occur. Uh, to the Director's question um, and the idea of moving it to two meters, maybe two and 2.5 meters makes sense. We're, we're, we're always in this dilemma of, you know, we don't want to pave paradise, right? Uh, we want a durable surface that, that yeah. uh, can be accessible, um, but, you know, we want uh, as much water infiltration and pollinator gardens as we can. So, uh, but 1.5 is about the size of your regular sidewalk, and, and you're correct, it, especially with runoff and kids it's, it is narrow thank you yes director Copen. yeah through you uh, your worship um, I heard quite clearly what you said about lacrosse box um, and that uh, it might need to come down sooner than later um, I too am concerned about the safety of that that facility because it is rather deteriorating did you do uh, you gave us an estimate about what it would cost to knock down the field house uh, do you have an estimate of what it would cost to knock down the lacrosse box and if, if that were to be done sooner? Because I don't see that in the phasing of the, no, it's, uh, of the plan either. It's not in there, as I recall. Uh, it's probably in the neighborhood of fifteen to $20,000. Um, there may be some salvageable material there that a contractor could use, um, um, but there isn't all the uh, complexities of, a, of an old building with heaven knows what inside of it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Picking up on Sorry, that. Director <coughs> Hoffman for those just at home. With the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Picking up on what Barbara Adams said uh, about interactive art, <coughs> just um, I hope we can keep in mind as we, we move along. Um, there are some wonderful uh, playground features that w can be utilized that combine um, art, performing arts, ecology, uh, all kinds of things. And the more I see them, I think, my gosh, that'd be so neat to have here. Diefenbaker Park in Tawasin, near the border, by the USA border there, they've got a, a water park sponsored by Kinsman or something, I think, where kids can change the dams. There's a kind of a water flow going here, and it ends up in a, a spray park as well. And uh, the, the kids are playing, they're, they're changing the dams and water builds up here, then it gets loosed here and comes down there, kind of steps down a hill. Uh, marvelous, it's kind of ecological, it's kind of artistic. Now it's a water park too, which is uh, artistically, you know, pails and colorful pipes. And then just down from there, there's another section of uh, musical um, instruments, you know, gongs and bells and things. Not that loud, but I've seen, I've walked by there and I've seen kids uh, almost having a little symphony, little things tinkling here, bang there, ding there, and they're all, they're all really musical, and kids get really creative in there. And again, again, you're combining, you know, a kind of a section of the park, it's playful, it's musical, um, a delight. So, you know, I hope we can keep in mind that kind of thing that combines, you know, music, art, ecology, um, etc. So... Here we go. Good luck. <laughs> thank, thank you, Director Hoffman. Uh, anything else? Okay. Uh, Council, any any additional comments you want to make at this time? No. I'm not seeing anybody. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, anybody from the audience? I think there's a few people here probably wanted to come in and just speak to us a little bit in terms of the plan. Anybody else wish to come forward? And this is just an open chance for anybody to make any comments, additional pieces. Oh. Had to be somebody. That's yeah. excellent. <laughs> So the same process, if you don't mind, just come here, yeah. name and municipality residence. Um, I'm Todd Elborn, and I'm in the Oak Bay residence. Um, I just want to thank you for doing a great job on, on, you know, including people around the park, including the public. I think you got a great plan. I live near the park, and I love the noise of the park, and you know, when it's when it's going. And uh, but the neat thing about the park is that it quietens down at dusk so uh, you mentioned about the lights and i think it's more around the soccer lights but if you know if you can consider um you know the lighting for the evening because you know the park is is well used during the day and it's and it's um and it's fantastic when it's you know it's just noisy and it's going but at night when it just quietens down it's just you know it really um just reflects that it's a community park and and it'd be nice to keep it that way thank you do you mind uh, just writing your name down so oh, we have the sorry. correct spelling for the minutes you will forever have the wrong spelling afterwards <laughs> if we don't do this is there anybody else who wishes to come forward any comments yes please i forgot to put oh, my okay. name down so i should do that but in addition just to say uh one more time in the comment section that i because I think that the, ten the presence of the tennis court and the pickleball court is what will impact neighbors the most, um, I hope that you won't approve uh, the creation of those uh, in a new park until such time as you have a broader sense of what your recreation facilities are. That seems to me the responsible thing to do. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rathbone. Anybody else wish to come forward at this time? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Dave Harrison. I'm uh, adjacent to the park. Welcome, Mr. Harrison. And uh, I really want to thank Mr. Lees for the, the work his team has done to take in a lot of our uh, concerns, especially with the noise where, as you mentioned, uh, having a uh, enth enthusiastic pickleball players in your backyard is, is uh, commendable, but it should not be occurring in my backyard. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wish to come forward at this time? Oh, yes, please do. Just jot your name down. All right. Uh, I'll just one last call if anybody else wishes to come forward. All right. Nobody else is coming forward. So we'll bring it back to this table. We have a number of options as a, as a group. I guess this is really council's motion, not, not parks, recreation, and culture. Um, <coughs> as to what we do with the uh, with the report at this time, there's a number of options that uh, staff gave obviously we can just receive it at this time we can receive it or we can uh, give it back to staff and to, and to Lees and associates for for changes but if, if there's changes recommended then I will ask for motions because it's not just going to be uh, general musings and uh, or we can uh, or we can make recommendations to approve it as is or with, with some openness uh, councillor nay yeah, uh, Mr. I just have one more question of Please? staff can of course. I do that okay um, or not of staff to Mr. Lease, okay. Um, it, so help me understand the noise. I, I'm just having listened to some of the comments from um, uh, from the audience there. Help me understand the noise impact as, as you would sort of be able to, um, as you assess it. So you have noise coming from the water park, kids, you know, that kind of noise. What and we've had tennis courts there previously, and now we've introduced uh, pickleball sports. So, can you um, do a sort of comparative assessment for me about what the impact of the noise from those three different amenities mean for neighbors? Mr. Lee's, perhaps you could just mimic the sound of knocking. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. I don't know. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, what I'm told uh, is that the it, it's not the volume 
uh, of the noise so much as the uh, the tone and the staccato nature of pickleball versus tennis that really gets under people's skin. And I've heard this not just in this community, but, but, but elsewhere as well. Sure, ideally, we would move all the noisiest activities as far away, in this case, right to the middle of the park, because we're surrounded by, by residents. We can't do that. Um, but uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of pulling things back. There's a screen along that north side. There's a change of some elevation, which will mitigate the, the noise. Um, and, and short of getting an acoustic engineer on board and, and spending a whole lot of money on information that's not going to be that useful, frankly, I, I think you, you, you can rely on folks like us to, you know, there, there just isn't that, there are not that many options for uh, accommodating this kind of use and, and, and mitigating the, the impact. Follow up, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, um, is it, does pickle, is pickle bar, does pickleball it a noisier activity than than the tennis? Is it because there's more people? Is, is that what it is, or is it the bang? I I, mean, I actually think you should ask the the, the neighbors because they can d explain it much more graphically than me. But my understanding is that it's not noisier; it's the quality of the sound that's really irritating. It's quite a hard plastic pock sound this is being hit, which is the the irritant. It's as close as you're going to get for me to make an imitation of the sound. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so we have this. I, I, I will say, I, I, I have, uh, I would like to see us look at just those two courts, because I, I really do think that we may be trying to create a design here to accommodate the noise in a way that doesn't best match the, the, the broader intent, which would be to, you know, if we move the tennis courts back into that corner, and just leave that big open space that allows for a central seating area for parents to watch all the kids and the different activities going on in a much more open way. Uh, that seems to me something to, to consider if we can find a, another home for the pickleball courts. So uh, that's the only part of this I, I, I can see may have any, any significant um, uh, departure from the design. I think uh, the, the, the components and the fitting of the pieces in is, is probably as good as we're going to get in a, in a neighborhood park. Uh, and in fairness, that wasn't an option put on the table for for the, for this, um, but that's my only comment. I would have that that might want to look at that would that would keep me hesitant from saying let's just approve it as is. I think there's some some room there for us to consider, and I'm not sure that has to go back to redesign as much as it does just to consider a broader question uh, for ourselves as we're making the the, the phasing decision on this. Um, but I'll I'll leave it to council. We need some some motion here to to move this forward. I can make some suggestions if you want. How's the breathway? I... Um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, your suggestion of um, what you have suggested so far would kind of sit well with me. Um, so I think that looking at the three or four um, options that uh, were that sit in front of us, um, that probably option number three uh, <coughs> might be the correct one until we can work out the tennis um, pickleball question. I'm wondering how the rest of council might feel about that. Okay, I, I'm just, um, Ms. Varela, you had uh, something you wanted to add to the... Uh, you may have a suggestion? Uh, just in the keeping of if there is action around uh, further traffic analysis, I'd also like to see a council resolution directing that, and I have some draft wording council may consider, um, which may relate to what you're currently considering. But uh, the courts and the pickleball, uh, you may want to refer to uh, either Mr. Ease or Dire Director Herman. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Braithwaite, you were starting down a path of... I think just, uh, I was looking at um, option number three, which would then perhaps give us the opportunity to look at um, a traffic plan or a traffic study around that area as well, because um, it could go back to um, staff with that in mind. Um, but it would be interesting to hear if that's um, what the rest of Council would like to see. 
I don't, I, I, it, my, my feeling is, is that we can't, um, we don't just want to receive this because then it just sits there and does nothing. And that I think is a waste of time and money. Uh, number two would be to refer it as in its current state. And I'm not sure that all of us feel really comfortable about referring it in its current state. So to me, option number three uh, would probably be the best option. Well, we can do that. We just then need some specific, uh, we can break them out one at a time if, if people would be so amenable uh, as to what we'd be referring back for more information or for, or for feedback. And I will make this fairly informal just because I would like to get the Parks and Recreation uh, Commission uh, feedback on this as well, although we would, we're the only ones voting uh, on any of these motions, but it'd be good to hear if there's any, any opinions from, from that table as well. We'd appreciate it. Um, so I'm amenable to that from a, from a wording of the motion perspective, then um, uh, you can do number three and then we can do, why don't we actually just do motions individually that say, can we refer X back to um, the consultant and staff uh, for some further information or further consideration? Um, and I'd like to be as specific as possible so it's not just general. Uh, can you just give us more information, but you know, give some pieces of that? Um, that portion. So I'll, I'll entertain any motions along those natures. And I think we have two possible suggestions. One is just the the use and orientation of the tennis and, and pickleball court and, and possibly just looking at that as a pickleball somewhere else. And the other one was the traffic study and then maybe some other aspects that people want to, to bring forward as well. I, I think that the the issue of the pickleball though, I mean, and, and perhaps I can look to Mr. Herman for this. Um, right now, we don't have any other areas where we could actually put pickleball. Is that not correct, Mr. Herman? Or have you looked? I, I know there was some talk about um, at Henderson, um, behind the Henderson Rec Center, that there could be a spot um, between the back of the building and the beginning of the um, baseball field that, that a, a pickleball court perhaps could get put there? Uh, through the chair, yeah, we were looking at a, a variety of different options um, and that was one of the locations. It would be a real shoehorn solution, it, you know, and so I'm not sure that in the end people would be much happier with the situation there, maybe for different reasons, but um, I, I think given what I've heard, uh, it sounds to me like we're talking about moving pickleball to another, like to one of the courts at um, Windsor Park potentially, and in order to, and I'm not sure whether council is envisioning then having one tennis court or to allow more room for other amenities or two tennis courts there, that would be a question. But uh, in answer to the direct question, we did look at some other locations, but nothing um, came up as a ideal solution for sure. I think what I was thinking along those lines was repurposing a different court, leaving the two tennis courts here as a as a model um, would be the, the, the thinking because we could leave the courts fairly adjacent to that. But I don't have the, all the solutions. I just have the questions. So um, I'm not sure if anybody else cares on this particular piece or not. So I'll just look for a motion. Uh, somebody is, and if not, we'll move on. Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you for this uh, moment of informality as uh, we inch our ways towards a motion that I'm not prepared to make just yet. But I am prepared to talk about um, why I would lean more towards number two versus number three, in that I really appreciate some of the uh, um, um, uh, compromises that have been made um, uh, without... Uh, uh, in terms of all the various users. Um, uh, the reason why I would lean more towards two instead of three is that I would imagine that this would be phased out or staged out over many, many years, especially since we don't have all the money at, at hand. So this is going to take years, regardless of, of, of conceptually what we were proved today or not. Um, and I would imagine the question of the pickleball court or the question of the noise or the question of whatever the particular issue could be dealt with at a later phase, I would hope, as part of the further analysis. Um, uh, but to consider approving it now, well, not approving it, but, but recommend it, that, that, it be, that it be adopted in terms of moving forward with conceptually something along these lines. 
um, would then allow um, consideration for things such as possible daycare use, uh, possible other funds, possible other considerations that ha that weren't part of the original um, original uh, um, vision uh, when it was uh, when it was mandated to uh, to to the uh, to the the contractors. Um, uh, we know. You know, the money's tight. We know our money is being pulled uh, in other directions, uh, and there's no way this will be done in three years. So, um, uh, but at the same time, we've got to make some changes there. I mean, at the, I, if, if, if we uh, conceptually approve something like this, then I could see some aspects of the plan starting to move forward, even if we don't deal with, for example, the pickleball courts or the tennis courts immediately. Um, I have heard uh, with respect to uh, our new CAO and some of our new planning processes and some of our new um, uh, intentions is to bring forward lots of master plans. And I would hope one of the many master plans that we'll be getting next year, the year after, will be a parks plan, a parks master plan. I, I, I won't hold um, a director of, um, uh, of Parks, Rec and Culture to a master plan within one year. But I would be awfully, uh, uh, I'd like to give a chance for a, a plan like that to catch up to a plan like this and not necessarily hold this fully in abeyance until that catches up. So that's why uh, if our council colleagues are amenable, um, I'd like to hear what they have to say, but I would lean more towards number two. Thank you. Just for clarification, I'll just bounce this off of staff. Uh, my read of this, if, if, we, if we were considering adding a, a, a service like um, a daycare. Uh, what I heard from the consultant was that would that would add considerably to the footprint. So I, I think if we're going to seriously look at that as a as an option, it probably would be one of those things we should refer back and say, "Can you give us some order of magnitude impact in terms of what that would look like from a, a footprint perspective?" Is that I think from a process that I, I don't think we could go ahead and say we approve this and then would do the daycare. Cause I think it would substantially change the nature of the of the design here. Um, although I'll look to staff just to, to get some input on that from a, a pro and I appreciate it. We can't get too far down that path in terms of like asking for a, a, a detailed aspect, but getting some sense. Um, so Ms. your Varela. worship, I'm not sure if I'm hearing uh, council wants to go back and consider additional uses that aren't currently on the table. I think we do have a terms of reference and a budget that have been established for this project. Um, so we do have to be careful how wide you're opening it up. If the consideration is about the tennis court and the pickleball, um, council could make a resolution so that it doesn't fall off the table, that you refer the issue of the tennis court and the pickleball court to a future committee of the whole and give time staff to come back to you with uh, a report and possible next steps. Okay, thank you for those oh. options, Ms. Varela. But I th just so from, the, from the question of, because the daycare, Funding and pieces are are newish, and they are outside of the scope of the original piece. But I also heard the, Mr. Lee's talk about the fact that that would change the necessity quite quite substantially. Um, I'll just I'll throw this maybe to Mr. Herman and, and to Mr. Lee's. Just if if council wanted to get a sense of the what the options would be, like just from a from a, a sizing perspective uh, and limitations, uh, if if that's something feasible that we could could bring back to this table for for some general information. Uh, Mr. Chair, not only would it significantly affect the plan, but I think it, it really turns back the clock on the process. We didn't go to the community with the idea of, of uh, any kind of daycare, child care facility there. So I think it would not, we'd, we'd really be putting, pushing the reset button. Um, I, my own personal opinion is that this park is too small to accommodate that recognizing there's funding there's you know maybe some good reasons to consider it but um y you've got precious little parkland you know you don't pay one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars for this park anymore right uh there's only certain things you can put in a in a in a park and uh uh yeah i think you know where i'm standing on that one if okay. I could just finish up the, or yeah. clarify one piece, if I may. Please, Councilor uh, I, I, I wasn't actually proposing that we put a daycare here. I don't think this is actually an appropriate place for daycare, so with no school right nearby. Um, maybe with busing, some sort of after-school care, possibly, uh, but, um, but I, I don't really feel that this location is uh, suitable for, for a daycare. Um, I was just anticipating that, uh, you know, 
seeing these plans come to fruition five years, 10 years, possibly 15 years hence, we have no idea what granting and funding opportunities might be available five, 10, 15 years hence. So I only was using the daycare as a, as a conceptual idea. That's all. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Zucker. Councillor Ney? I can come back to you in a second. Okay. okay. Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, maybe just to put something out there for my fellow councillors to discuss, uh, but I, I, I would support uh, using option three that's presented by staff and, and potentially with language uh, that, that council refer the draft current urban park master plan to staff and these and associates for amendment. Uh, including one, an analysis of existing and potential tennis and pickleball facilities and potential options for siting, <coughs> and two, development of a scope of work for a traffic analysis study. If that's a motion, I'll second it. Okay, we have a mover and a seconder. Um, Mr. Jones, you're just raising that, that finger of concern. Yeah, Your Worship, I apologize for jumping in. Um, perhaps one other thing you might want to add into that is what are the other potential uses of a, a facility on the site? So if you're going to build a, a facility, what other, uh, what, what potential uses are there of that? Um, okay. I'm not, I'm not sure. What I heard, and, and maybe I'll just reflect this back, because I, I heard from Mr. Lees that that determination of, of the specifics of the need is not yet done. Uh, and would be almost its own process. So I just want to make sure that if we're referring that back to, to staff, that that's something that's that's doable within the confines of the contract that's that's been that's been put forward. Well, I guess I'll go to Mr. Lees on that one, and then Mr. Herman. Uh, well, maybe raise a better better one to answer this, but it's 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 not within the confines of the contract. You know, Mr. Herman. Uh, Your Worship, I think the. The footprint of the building is something that is, has been put forward. What would be encompassed within that footprint is maybe still to be determined through some additional consultation, but the footprint is, is basically being proposed and, and to change the footprint is what's going to impact the park. So I think if that's the crux of the question, if you're, if you're considering activities that would necessitate a change to the footprint of the building that's more difficult than um, and I, but I think if you're happy with the footprint and let's find out later what can be put in there there's no reason why we can't move forward okay so we have two two uh, motion number three with two specifics one is a uh, review of the the pickleball tennis ball tennis court configuration and 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 more maybe in a broader sense of the community and the second of the uh, of just of a traffic study piece. Um, I just that would be the recommendation to council then for or, or really yes it's referral back. So on the on the traffic study piece, is that something you're expecting to get back um, with the report or is it just for my clarification or something that we would just be flagging that we would want prior to the implementation phase? Uh, Your relevant? Worship, um, respectfully, Council may consider a resolution something along the line of directing staff in consideration of the engineering department's current work plan uh, to provide recommendations at a future committee of the whole on the potential scope and associated costing of further traffic analysis related to the Carnarvon, Mark, um, Carnarvon Park Master Plan, <coughs> excuse me, just because we really have to na nail down uh, scope, cost, and the department's existing work plan. Okay, is that, I'm getting a nod from Councillor Appleton and the seconder, are you okay with that as a, Sorry, just what a repeat we, of that what, please Ms. Varela? Just to be clear. So the recommendation dealing solely with the traffic analysis mm -hmm. uh, with council's permission could uh, read something along the lines of that council direct staff in consideration of the engineering department's current work plan to provide recommendations at a future committee of the whole on potential scope and associated costing of further traffic analysis related to the Carnarvon Park Master Plan. Councillor I, I, so what, so 
we haven't talked about court options, so we're just going to separate them right now in that motion. Yeah. So okay, I that's fine. That makes it clear because the other ones are more complicated for me. So I, I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm absolutely clear on this before we're having calling any questions here. We have a motion that has uh, referred to staff with two pieces. One is is the uh, is the tennis question, and the second part is the, the traffic study. The traffic study is really referral to a future time to, to come back. This the first part is is directing this group to come back with those those options to us. Yes, Your Worship, and it's cleaner uh, respectfully if we split those two okay. motions because they really are different. I'm gonna use my purview as chair to do that, to split those two motions. So uh, then I'm, I'll deal with the first one first, which is to, to, ref, to refer it back specifically on those, on those courts. Yes, we can have discussion. Um, which motion are we discussing first, please? Uh, I've separated them. So the only motion live right now is the, uh, is the r referral back to staff and, and uh, consultant with, to bring back some more options around the uh, tennis court pickleball question. Uh, well, well I, I have no problem with that. Um, I, I would have a problem with the um, uh, courts being uh, rotated uh, in such a way as to create a canyon uh, effect that we're trying to get away from. So, um, uh, and without a parks master plan, talking about the other locations, I'm not quite sure how much sort of a delay that that would create for any implementation of this plan. So this, uh, I do have some concerns with, with, with the motion. Um, so if, if there's some way of, of, of alleviating, allevi alleviating that concern where, where basically this is just dead in the water, um, I would, uh, would love to hear uh, what that could be. Well, I guess the time frame question would be a reasonable one. And uh, Councillor Appleton, you wanted to add? Just to thank you, Worship. Just to clarify, and and, and hearing Councillor Zoka, um, I I concur with your comment that you just previously made that when I'm when I made the motion for an analysis of facilities, I was talking about options throughout the district and in on on other sites that have existing tennis and pickleball. Well, not existing pickleball because that's only at Carnarvon, but uh, so we're talking about a holistic analysis of all the potential locations. No, I think it's not a master plan in this case. It's just questioning whether we can relocate this pickleball court to another, to swap it essentially and, 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 and use it just for tennis, which would alleviate a lot of the noise concerns and might allow for some reorientation of the, of the courts. Uh, but I do think there was a question raised there, a concern raised about does this defer and delay the decision-making process inordinately? So do we have a sense of timeline if this motion is made to, to look at the tennis court options uh, for this to come back to a future committee of the whole? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything, Mr. Um, Hunter. I think we could come back with, I don't know how many options, but at least one or two in, in fairly short order. Um, if, if we're expecting to do a more extensive I mean, the easiest question is whether we're going to repurpose a different tennis court, a different outdoor court somewhere else. If that's the extent of what we're looking at, that, that's whenever you want to schedule the next meeting. Um, if we're looking at, you know, options where there's little bits of land that right now don't have a court and we're trying to figure out whether one will fit, it's going to take a little bit longer and it'll take longer the more of those various sites we look at, but I would think certainly within, I don't know, a few weeks time, we should be able to have, we be prepared to come back with something for council. Councillor Appleton? I'd, I'd invite the other councillors' comments on this, but in, in my mind, I was picturing existing facilities and existing courts and not the the, not the, the scope that would be involved in discussing what well, creation of a new court, so I'm talking about existing facilities. That's what I've heard as well. Councillor Ney? Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking too, but I, you know, I, I would um, vote in favor of this motion because I, 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 there's a rising popularity of these pickleball courts and I would be concerned if we lost them completely. So I would like to um, hear from staff what other possibilities on existing courts um, there are. Thank you, Councillor Ney. Uh, and I just would like to, I, my understanding is we're just looking at if that, if they're tennis courts and they can be moved a bit closer to the sideline, does that allow for some opening up of that sort of central space and multi-use space, if that's a, a benefit or not, that uh, would, be, would be helpful as well. Uh, Mr. Herman, you had a... 
uh, through the chair, options to repurpose other courts. We've got two options. It's either Windsor or Henderson. Uh, so we have a motion on the table. Is there any comment from Parks and Recreation Commission members? Not seeing any, okay. So we have a motion on the table. I'm happy to call the question at this point. This is, again, just for clarification, a motion to refer it back just on the specifics of it, the, the, the use of that corner and, and, and the possibility of swapping the pickleball for some other location. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? Thank you. We have a secondary motion here for referring the, um, maybe you can read the motion again, Ms. Varela, just the traffic study uh, to engineering department. Thank you, Your Worship. The council directs staff in consideration of the engineering department's current work plan to provide recommendations at a future committee of the whole on potential scope and associated costing of further traffic analysis related to the Carnarvon Park master plan. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Councilor Zelka. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I think it's uh, uh, well worded and uh, and certainly alleviates my concern about um, uh, uh, budget in terms of um, of uh, spending lots of money we don't have. So uh, uh, I'm providing basically some 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 leeway for staff to to fit it into the work plan. Uh, I would imagine it would be in parallel to whatever is continuing forward with this. I, I would hope. Um, and that wouldn't necessarily be, be a roadblock to, uh, for example, uh, uh, doing something with the lacrosse courts or doing something elsewhere on the site. Um, uh, obviously, we wouldn't do much, anything with the parking until uh, something came back on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Anything from <coughs> Parks, Recreation, and Culture Commission members? No. Okay, I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? Uh, I believe that concludes our... Oh, Councillor Nay, you have... Sorry. Sorry, I, I shouldn't I have just, been so presumptive. I, no, no, that's okay. I, I would like to, I, pr when this comes back, I could, we could still discuss that, but I, I would still like to, I, I'm curious about Council's thoughts around the idea of uh, asking staff to consider the use of the field house uh, for daycare. So I know we had that discussion, but um, it, let, let's say uh, staff comes back and finds another place for the pickleballs court so we haven't talked about whether <coughs> that would be replaced with another tennis court or that would become a space if it did <coughs> pardon me <coughs> could the field house not be <laughs> it always Sorry. happens at the worst possible times when you get the little little tickle so take your time no we're not in any panic here <coughs> excuse me could the field house not not gonna come i think the question is can we not move the field house <coughs> and and accommodate a, 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 a daycare yeah. um I'm, I'm just gonna move that to staff because i think we need some guidance here in terms of, of how we would word this in a way that is not going to kind of sidetrack what we're doing on the park plan but uh i'll go to staff first and i'll come to council braithwaite uh, so just clarification, are we talking about the footprint of the building or the uses within the building, Your Worship? I, I believe this is uh, the uses of the building, but also it, it would have an impact on the footprint at the, in that case. So, <clears throat> Your Worship, I, I think what staff were suggesting uh, were that we would come back to you with potential uses of the building on the property. And we've heard from... Uh, members of council and the commission and, and the community and uh, we would come back with some different ideas uh, around that um, and we're uh, sensing that uh, clearly given the size of the property the the, the footprint is a is a very important issue so we would clearly understand that so does that need a separate motion um, I, I th it's a good question I mean I think if the intention here is to add daycare potentially into the mix, it would change the, the size and, and location and pieces of that building quite considerably. So I think if that's, uh, I'm trying to think of how we'd even incorporate that into, because it, it's separate from the work that Lees and Associates is doing for us. 
um, but would come to a future discussion of that building, I suppose, in, in some future sense. But it would change the nature of this design as well as part of that piece. So um, I, I'm, I'm thinking we may just want to consider that as part of the, the, the discussion on the use of the field house and the pieces. But um, Councilor Braithwaite, you have some wisdom that I don't have, I'm sure. Uh, actually, well, not really wisdom. I just, I, I, I mean, I don't think I could actually support that in that, in um, the way it's being presented because when I look at um, other um, other buildings that we have that have that uh, daycare component in them and I, I look and see we, uh, let's use the neighborhood learning center as an example they have to have a, a fenced area for children to play outside when they have more than X number of children, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that it just changes the whole scope of what we were looking for at this particular location. So I actually couldn't support having um, putting daycare in there right at this moment in time. I mean, it might be something down the road years from now we might go gosh we should have done that but right now I don't think that it's within the scope of what we looked at for this building and I'm not sure whether um, it, I think it would put us behind um, re uh, severely to have to go and, and do something like that so I couldn't support that I think if I may there's there's a that is a discussion I would like to have as council as to do we want to provide some space for for that under the current program and maybe leave it the question a bit broader because obviously there's this buildings like the, the the scouts and, and guides building in fireman's park that is old and in need of uh of, of, of updating at some point and maybe a logical place uh there's other possible places in our community that we might look at this that might not be this particular place so why don't we treat that as a separate piece to bring forward to look at that as a piece but I, I don't want to get it lost just to have it fall away forever comes to breathe and I guess one thing that I, I should add as well is that when I look at that field house I look at it as more of a, a meeting place for Beige United for the baseball for uh, user groups like that uh, in, within the park um, rather than specifically for child care or something like that Councillor Zelka um, thank you chair um, uh, I'm Finding some way to talk about, uh, I guess, um, um, uh, various uses uh, throughout our various various parks, not specifically at Carnarvon, because uh, I think if we can find an opportunity for that, um, that would be a complementary to this, but not necessarily be this, in terms of of of, um, of asking um, uh, Lean Associates specifically to work on it. I'm sure it's outside uh, the current bailiwick of of that contract. Um, this this uh, 2,700 square feet on the second floor, uh, I guess, uh, indoor part would be about 1,350 square feet upstairs. Um, I could see, you know, maybe in the evenings the, the Cub Scouts may want to move there or, or the Brownies uh, and freeing up that building over here or possibly those folks who are not happy that Skedaddle takes certain uh, facilities away during the summertime. They may want to have Skedaddle here. I mean, there's all these sort of things that have to shift around potentially if we are going to look at, um, at childcare and uses and what might be possible. Uh, when I think about, for example, the sound of the um, uh, refrigeration in the, uh, in the cafe at the Oak Bay Rec Center, which is unfortunately way too loud, this facility might be more appropriate for music because uh, I imagine this will be nice and quiet. Uh, of course, the neighbors nearby might might appreciate a little bit of hard rock coming wafting across the uh, the, uh, the the park, or maybe not. So, so those sort of considerations, um, um, uh, I would like to see us maybe consider uh, or come come up with a way that isn't necessarily part of this motion. Um, I'm not quite sure how to I'll facilitate to, that. You know, I'm going to go back to Councillor Nee on this. Is that is the is the broader discussion of how we find childcare a, a better question in future than? Than yeah, I, I think that given the concerns that have been expressed, and I think they're legitimate. I think, but it, it would be nice not to lose it. So, so I, I think that's a good suggestion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Getting nods around the table. So no motion on the table at this point. Uh, anything else? Anybody? Uh, Ms. Rella, you had one more. Uh, just clarification, then, uh, Your Worship, is Council looking for staff to bring back a discussion on potential uses in the field house uh, for uh, their consideration, or at this time at a future committee of the whole, or are you leaving that off the table? No, my understanding is our, you know, the next phase prior to, to, to looking at you know approvals or anything else is there'll be a more fulsome discussion about what exactly is needed in that field house. 
Um, and that will determine some of the scale and sizing and the layout of the rooms and, and the amenities that are in there. Um, and that'll come forward at a future time. It's not going to be part of this this design. Is that That's my understanding. So it'll, it'll form part of the process in any case. I'm getting nods from the consultant and Mr. Herman. I think Mr. Herman, anything else to add? Uh, Your Worship, just another point of clarification. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm paying attention or not, but if we're going to look at the options for moving pickleball courts elsewhere, does council want to see two tennis courts at this location or one tennis court with the ability to provide more space for other amenities? I, I took it that we weren't changing the scale of it. Uh, the orientation, the location, that might be one piece but you know I, I would say if there's a if there's a compelling you look at that and say you know if we just had that little bit of extra space we could do something even better with that that share space there would be nothing stopping you from bringing something back as an option for this table but I didn't hear that there was a desire to reduce it from two to one it was to look at leaving it to taking the second one from pickleball and turning it into a uh, into a tennis court and looking at putting it elsewhere I think there's still concerns about losing tennis playing space in the community. All right, uh, I think we're, we're pretty much at the end of this meeting now. Um, thank you all very much, uh, commission members, council, all the members of the public who came out to this, and thank you very much, Mr. Lees and your associates uh, for the work that was put into this. A little bit more work to do, uh, but almost at the end of the end of the line here, and very much appreciated the uh, the feedback from everybody involved. Um, and certainly the uh, the quality of the work that was brought forward to us is much appreciated. Uh, so with that, I need a motion to adjourn. I uh, move, move adjourn in camera. I move that in accordance with section 91G of the community charter that the open portion of the meeting of council be adjourned and that a closed session be convened to discuss litigation or potential litigation affecting the municipality. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much.